Hello, welcome to another managerial special from the Honest Football Podcast. I'm Chris Hogan, and with me as always is Mr. Daniel Cody. Once again, we're talking about another championship managerial appointment. This time it is Burnley, recently relegated from the Premier League. They have appointed Vincent Company as their new first team manager. The 36-year-old joins after the part in the Belgian first division side and elect where he spent three years there. He joined Andalette in 2019 as a player manager before taking a full-time role in August 2020. During his first full season as manager, company led the club to a fourth-place finish, overseeing a youthful squad with the youngest average in the league. Last season, company led Anderlecht to third place, a European qualification and the Belgium Cup final. Vincent has shown impressive credentials in leading one of Belgium's biggest teams back to European football and a cup final last season. And we've been excited by his philosophy, approach and ambition for the club. It's another championship side going with a, a young coach slash manager, just as high known name as John Dahl Thompson has gone to Blackburn Rovers. Yeah, it's, it's been an eventful day, shall we say the least. I, I'm not sure this one's quite the same because this has been one of the worst kept secrets in English football for the last two or three weeks now. It was pretty heavily linked in May. Uh, betting was suspended at the end of May. And then after a few twists and turns, he is eventually here. And interestingly, which we'll get to later, the first one of the four we've had in the championship so far that's appointed as manager rather than head coach, which I think is going to be crucial as we go on through time. I'm really interested to see what it brings later down the line. I think, and I'm sure we'll get onto it, it's going to be a big change of approach from Burnley. There's some key players going, both centre-halves are off out of contract, and it's going to be a very interesting year for them in a very hard league. But for Vincent Company, look, he did a solid job at Anderlecht. He's taken over from a club that has sort of lost its way a bit after having a stalwart managing a club from top to bottom for so many years. Of course, they took it to the final day in the Premier League, couldn't quite survive, but... Now it's into the Lions' cauldron because the championship is just as difficult and very hard to get out of. Yeah, he, uh, Burnley got relegated from the Premier League last season. Um, they, I think they, they've definitely gone a different way, especially in terms of stature of a name. Um, obviously, Vincent Company is a Premier League legend for the last 10, 12 years. Obviously, won multiple Premier League titles. And, and he knows the English game. I think that's a bit of a crucial thing compared to like a John Dahl Thomason. Even though they're brief in Newcastle, but companies very recently just come out of English football. So he knows what how intense the English game is. Yeah. And if he's looking at building a younger squad, he's going to have good connections in the Premier League as well. And he'll be probably the sort of person that will be trusted to take young stars from Premier League clubs. So that could be a key part of it as well. But yeah, as you mentioned, it's weird saying this about what we think off camera is the youngest championship manager for next season so far. He's actually probably managerial-wise the most experienced of the four appointments we've had so far this summer, having two full seasons and elect and a bit before as player manager. So it's not all it seems. It's another young coach, but he's not really one that is being talked about as having earned his stripes, working as a coach, being an excellent coach on the training ground. He is that talismanic inspirational figure, isn't he? I guess a bit like, more like a Gerard or a Lampard people we've seen recently go into management. He is a Premier League legend. He's a leader. He's charismatic. He's obviously done TV work as well, even during his playing days. And I think, as you say, this is going to uh, signal a real change of intent from Burnley because we have seen that basically their job was give Sean Dice as little money as possible and try and keep the club afloat, which he did a bloody remarkable job of for a number of years. But eventually it was going to get found out. And now losing a lot of experienced players. They've got, I think, seven over 30s going on a free this summer. It's going to be a real rebuilding process. I know we talked about other clubs, there being a bit of building need to be done, but rather than Blackburn being a build, this one across Lancashire is a proper rebuild because it's going to be half a new squad. There's going to be a lot of younger players coming in. And I get the feeling that a bit like Anderlecht, it's going to be a gradual process to take a club that should maybe be competing to come back to the Premier League to that level. I don't think it's going to happen immediately. Well, we've had all the um, off-the-field stories, with, especially with the relegation from the Premier League, the, the £60 million pound loan. Will that play a part, especially this season? Yeah. I mean, they're losing big wages off the wage bill, which they're not going to be able to replace. I, I can only see this appointment being a complete change in direction. I can't see them going out and trying to stick to the same philosophy. And we've seen it across a few clubs. So obviously Watford have seemingly done the same this summer as well. Another club that have come down 
but Burnley look like they're trying to build something a bit more long term now and you know I hate to say it but maybe something a little bit cheaper and it, it's a very similar situation to I, what we saw when Swansea came down after US ownership had taken over immediately the wage bill got slashed you saw a very young squad come in that took time to settle but with the right coach, it can go up the league. And obviously, they had a couple of seasons in the playoffs with Steve Cooper. So it's not an impossible job. But it's a very difficult one. And for Vincent Company as well, there are probably easier jobs in English football he could have taken as his first one. I know it's a, a similar area to where he'd been living when he was at Manchester City. But I think beyond that, he's probably taken on one hell of a challenge. Yeah, um, obviously, 14 players have been released from Burnley this season. And you said that the wage cut. And there's been some excellent servants for the club, as you say, like Ben Mee, and obviously took charge with Mike Jackson last season. Let's briefly just go back to last season with Burnley. Um, I wouldn't say it was coming for, for Burnley, this was going to happen, because as you said, they're not paying money to splash the cash on players. Um, maybe Sean Dyche's style might have just gone a bit stale. It's, you would think it's a miracle that actually gets to the final day. Obviously, there were three or four that were really cut adrift at the bottom of the Premier League for most of the season. But I, I don't put too much criticism on Sean Dyche because he probably had the lowest budget in the Premier League every year. And what he did in my eyes, I mean, they were in Europe, don't forget, one year. He, it was a miracle what he achieved with them. But as you say, it looked like everyone just ran out of steam a little bit. And look, a lot of those players in that squad were not just passing the 30 mark. They were well beyond it. And Look, if you looked at it on paper, it probably wasn't a Premier League team. And I know you mentioned the 14 players that are left the club, probably seven or eight of them first teamers in fairness. But you've also then got what happened with Chris Wood in January, a little bit of a quick money make. His replacement, well, their course has already done a, an interview on international duty saying I'm not playing in the championship. There's going to be more problems than the ones that meet the eye. They've probably got one superstar young player in Dwight McNeil, who I would expect to maybe get Premier League interest this summer. So it's going to be a real interesting time. And I wonder if for Vincent Company, it's going to be a case of maybe selling one or two of those bigger name players and trying to rebuild with the money that they bring in. Because I can't imagine without that, he's going to have a massive budget. So it's a bit of a crossroads for the club, to be honest. But we're seeing the same with Watford. We've seen a lot of young coaches brought in in other championship clubs. It's not the end of the world when there's six, seven or eight clubs in the same position. And with the championship being so open, if you get it right, you've got a great chance of being in that top six still. Can you see Vincent Company going for the same way what Frank Lampard did at Derby? Uh, he got the youth players, obviously younger players at, in the Premier, or high Premier League clubs like a Mason Mount and a Tamori and Harry Wilson. Those sort of players, you, you could probably get those sort of players from uh, Manchester City, like a Delap, a Palmer for, as, as two examples. Can you see Vincent Company doing that? Yeah. And, I, and as I said to you at the start, I think, the key for him with the type of player and the type of character he's proven to be is any manager in the top six, if you want to send someone on loan to the championship, you know he's going to have a great mentor to work under if it's Vincent Company. And let's be fair, Burnley is a well-run club. They've had good coaching staff in for a long time. This isn't a, this isn't a poor club overnight. It's just finding itself in a bit more of a mess off the pitch than on it. It's going to be a rebuild, but I would see the core of it being younger stars coming in both permanently and on loan from Premier League clubs. But the difference with, say, Frank Lampard's Derby, the example you used, they blew the wage budget and got some top championship players alongside them, which Burnley might have two or three of them left. But whether they're going to be able to do that with new additions, I'm not so sure. We don't, yeah, it hasn't been given what, how many years he's got. I presume it would be a, a two slash three year deal. Obviously, it's a massive rebuild for the summer. How do you think he'll get on this first season? It's really hard to predict because you're looking at the moment and I've got the team screen up on the website. It's basically a carcass of a squad, isn't it? They've not even got a full bench probably at the moment. So it's very difficult to predict now. The one thing I would say for Burnley when I look at the transfer window, their biggest issue in terms of players they've lost is defence. And if I trust anyone to build a defence in English football, it's probably Vincent Company. So that side of it, I believe, will take care of itself. We saw when he was at Anderlecht, it took time. And I think... There's going to be a, a expectation versus reality sort of crossover here, which is obviously when a club comes down from the Premier League, they've got parachute payments, you're expecting them to go back up. But most of their parachute payments are going to be paying off debts. We know that already. So I think this is going to take a lot longer. I think the fans have got to be realistic with him. And I think the key for Vincent Company in that is probably a progressive style of football. If they're playing good football, I think he'll be given that little bit of time. 
As it stands, I don't think they'll go up first season. I can't confidently say that. Of course, the transfer window could change that massively for us. But the top six is so open in the championship. It's so tight. They're going to be right in that mix. And I'd be a little surprised if they didn't make the playoffs with the right signings because I think he's going to get a lot of support. And I think he's a good young coach. I think given time, he will be the right man for Burnley and he'll help rebuild them again. But it's a big if because when you come down for the Premier League, there's always that expectation. And I don't feel as they are at the moment and certainly looking at their current squad as the transfer windows just opened. They're nowhere near in a position to compete for the title. So that's probably the biggest question mark over Vincent Company. Will he get the time? And is the expectation realistic? I don't expect Burnley to be to win it. I expect Burnley to be up there. I really do. Uh, yeah. But I think they need to get rid of more players than actually come in so far. I think they'll definitely need another goalkeeper. I'm sure someone will come in for Pope. And he will want to be back in the Premier League because he's got a World Cup coming up in November. So he will want to be on the plane to Qatar. Other than that, McNeil probably might get an offer in. I don't know where, but probably someone like Everton will probably go for McNeil or something like that. And, and someone's got to go for Corne. If Corne is still somehow playing in the, in the championship, the Burnley could easily romp it. But other than that, they, yeah, they do need to rebuild. Company will have to definitely have a different style. He'll definitely follow the Guardiola style of football. He's used to it for the last four or five years. He will definitely will want to use that in his philosophy. Who he has in as his backroom uh, staff is also key as well. I think probably Sean Bernardi will probably go there now. And then they have the connection with Belgium. And he's just been sacked from, uh, from Hibs. It's, it's going to be a hard year for Burnley. And I think they really need to concentrate on the football side of it. I know the off-field stuff is just as important, but if they can distract the fans of the off-the-field stuff, and if and the company does well, then they don't have to worry about it and they go on smoothly. I don't think... I think Burnley will make the playoffs next season. I really do. It's I don't think they'll go up, though, as an early prediction. It depends who they bring in. But as an early prediction, I don't see it going higher than that in playoffs. Um, my worry is for season two is if he starts well again, I can easily see a Premier League club going in for him. And he's worked elsewhere. He's got a body of work behind him. He's not just been given an opportunity out of nowhere. He's done two years of solid work. And uh, I like you, I think that's maybe a bigger worry. If he does achieve so much with Burnley, how long will he be there? Maybe is a, another question that we've got to ask, unfortunately, for Burnley fans. And that is our thoughts on the appointment of Vincent Comley as the new first team manager of Burnley. Let us know in the comments how you think he'll get on and how do you think Burnley will do next season? Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the Football Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at Honest Football Free. And we'll see you next time.